Hey guys, what's up? It's Emily from Red Hound Reiki. Thank you for tuning in, and if you're new, uh, thanks for watching my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Um, super quick, I'm so sorry I've been off for a while. It's um, been a crazy week with work and healing and um, all of the energy work that I've been doing for myself and I had a birthday last week so shout out to all you other Cancerians out there um, what a year is all I can say um, so I'm tuning in today to do a quick one week reading for you and um, especially because we do have a tiny, tiny, tiny solar eclipse this week, which means um, while it's not the most powerful thing that you've ever seen, a lot of people are going to be affected by it. And um, so I wanted to tap into the energies that we're getting for, um, for everybody. So this is a general reading, but I'm going to touch upon general energies, um, briefly on romance, well, hopefully briefly, and um, advice from the Archangels and Ascended Masters, and then we'll end with a Rumi card. So, um, to get started, the first two, actually, I already shuffled and pulled these cards so that I could not have you sit here for that <laughs> and keep the time down on this. But the first two cards I pulled came out together, and that was first the Willow, and Secondly, um, and that's the two of forces, and secondly, two worlds, which is the two of scrolls. And um, what I'm getting from these are basically that um, this, there's going to be some a little bit of turmoil coming up this week. You can see these tumultuous waters, and it's probably going to have a lot of um, emotional ups and downs this coming week and it may be because partially because of this um, small solar eclipse which uh, you can kind of see in the picture that's sort of what's happening here like the tree is eclipsing the Sun in this picture and I'm, I'm getting that we're kind of like the tree like we're gonna be okay we're still standing tall and firm and um, we're rooted but we're going to be in the path of all the of this like emotional stuff that's coming through and coming through us and releasing and passing by and clearing out um that's some of the most important stuff that's going on this month is all of this clearing and this washing away um it also is cancer season which is a water sign so you've got the water here for that um but you've also got this like this um, bird up here so it's like we're standing tall we're standing firm and we're flying above the chaos uh, so we just kind of have to have to remember that and get through it um, but everybody's gonna be okay it's just a time a transitional time for everybody um, it was kind of balanced with the two of worlds which is the two of scrolls and this card really talks about um, a need to balance um, your uh, spiritual life with your temporal life. So it's like seeking seeking that balance or seeking the integration of the, the spiritual into the temporal life, like your regular everyday 3D existence. Um, and that's so much of what these um, astrological or astrological events are bringing to us at this time. Um, if you watch YouTube on any of these spiritual channels, you cannot escape the uh, speaking of these things that are happening. Like, there's just no, very little um, dispute that that we're being, we're living through a time that's unlike any other at this point, And we are being asked to integrate our spiritual uh, lives and parts of ourselves with our regular everyday life so that we can bring that higher vibration into the physical world. Um, you may have been going back and forth on this for a lot of lifetimes. You might have um, lived lives as, um, you know, a nun or a monk or a priest or um, any 
any incarnation of a holy person or a spiritual person and you might have um, lived a very mundane life in other lives like going back and forth from the extremes and we're really called to start to integrate that that we are also spiritual beings as we are physical beings and um, one is not necessarily greater than the other we're called to be integrating the two of them so that's coming up. Um, this is this is coming up for this week. Then I went to pull one more card, and these three came out together. So we have the light of the world, the queen, or no, it was the. Let's see. How did this go? The light of the world, the queen of keys, and the king of keys. So we have counterparts here. And we have this card and what the light of the world really talks about most of the time um, is following your higher self your inner guidance and that is really also tapping into your spiritual self um, so it's it's got a similar message to um, the two of worlds like you are moving along in your daily, your temporal kind of regular life here and knocking at the door is your intuition, your higher self, your higher guidance, that something's coming up and you're going to have to start to listen to that. You wanna be guided by that, that's your greatest guide. Um, and you see the little cat down here to represent intuition. He looks like a really like a benevolent sort of guide and um, and that's the message we should be getting from this. But I'm also like randomly getting this message about like don't take any candy from strangers like some, for some reason this week. So um, I, don't, I don't know. So just for if that means something to somebody. Um, follow your guidance. And then that came out with these so so it will affect with the it will affect this situation here whatever this is for you these are counterparts so you have a king and a queen it looks like a relationship of some sort it might um because it's the king and queen of keys it could be a business partnership because that really talks about um like uh success and business and money it could also be something um something that was the foundation of which was formed based on uh, tradition or traditional values um, or it could be like um, I'm getting like a marriage that came together based on um, based on like what people would traditionally think was a good idea like it looked good on paper sort of you know what I mean um, I'm not saying there's no love there but it's not really like it's not really like that kind of uh, spiritual pairing this is like people who got together uh, because it seemed like the most prudent thing to do or something it's almost like it it was for stability from for like not for money like so not like somebody was rich but but so that um there would be more than one income or something like that so something to do with money um in any case these are not bad neither one of these are bad people right so um they're not you see the king is riding away from the queen and they're not even looking at each other and like they both look really happy to be walking away so um so there's a chance that there's you know this could be you this could be somebody you know this could be a business partner situation um but somebody who is playing a key role in your life if it's not you um there may be this kind of separation happening um in this, you know, or at least starting in this next week or so, and they're being guided by their higher selves. So whatever it is, they're happy about it. And I mean, it might not be a joyous occasion. I'm not trying to insinuate that, but they know it's the right thing. Um, this could also be just on a more general note, the 
the two halves of yourself. We've been talking a lot about masculine and feminine energies inside of every one of us. So this could be those two halves that are not quite in sync yet. Um, so that you might need to um, work with this guidance, this spiritual energy to, to try to um, unify the two halves of yourself. But really I'm getting, I'm getting that it could be a relationship or partnership and um, they're just not on the same page. Like you see the king is over here, here's his castle. I feel like here's the queen and she's like far, far away up in the tower of the castle. Like they're just not on the same page. So, and they're both, they're moving in opposite directions. Um, and, uh, and this is, whatever this is, whatever this is maybe coming down this week or um, around the time of the eclipse. So just keep that in mind. Um, if this is you or your situation or somebody you know, the, the important thing to keep in mind is to follow your own guidance. You don't have to, um, if you don't have to listen to everybody else, like the, the person who is important here is you and what you are hearing and feeling and seeing, um, in the situation. Okay. So that is was supposed to be the general guidance, even though it went into relationship stuff. This, um, these cards I pulled for uh, relationship matters this week. And we have the sun, which says support. And we have the eight of roses, which says signals. So um, this really does kind of tie in a little bit with um, that last set of cards to the sun, also the light of the world, also your support, your guidance system um, could represent the divine and making sure that you're integrating that and listening to that kind of support um, as far as your relationships go. Um, it could also point to the, um, the eclipse, the, some of this movement this is movement is going to happen around the time of the eclipse. So just be aware of that. Um, the eight of roses is the equivalent of the eight of wands, which is usually fast movement, fast communication, things changing quickly, things moving forward quickly, jumping forward quickly. Um, it says signals. So it could be receiving, receiving your guidance, receiving your signals. So um, I would say the major message here is to make sure you are tapping into that intuition and receiving your higher self or the divine's guidance um, in your relationship situations. So that will not lead you astray, whereas all of your friends and your idiot cousins will indeed lead you astray. Um, that's about all I have for that. Next, um, I pulled I tried to build just a few angel and ascended master um, cards, but I shuffled twice and all these cards came out and they all seemed relevant. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all of them because they're pretty easy. So the first is Ariel. New psychic and spiritual experiences are changing the way that you view the world and yourself. Allow your spiritual gifts to open through study, prayer, and meditation. And this is like what we just said. It's time for us to start integrating our spiritual um, selves into our physical reality. So um, it's no longer just about working, eating, sleeping, and reproducing. Now, like, there's a real spirit um, that we need to start integrating into our life and um, notice when those things start happening to you because yes they can happen to you and they are happening to you um, next uh, from the Archangel Michael Oracle you have created this situation and you have the power to change it there's a prayer on here that says thank you for letting me lean on your strength and for reminding me of my personal power Please guide me to manifest and heal according to divine will, creating peace and blessings for everyone involved. So um, whatever situation you find yourself in, you, through your um, thoughts and actions, have attracted it into your life. That doesn't mean you might have physically done something that directly um, and physically created whatever situation you're in. I mean, maybe you did, but 
your actions, this is how the law of attraction works, your actions, your emotions, your, um, uh, your thoughts, all of those create an environment that attract in a specific situation. Um, and so you have the power then to change any situation that you've created. Um, so that's important for you to remember this week and to listen to that guidance that we keep talking about when it comes to changing it and how it should be changed and in what way. Um, next, another one from Archangel Michael. Keep your eyes on your targeted intention. The prayer is, thank you, Archangel Michael, for helping me focus on my inner vision and intention. I ask for your guidance in releasing any fears or doubts, granting me the confidence and courage to take action toward realizing my dreams. So um, this is really about making sure that the thoughts and emotions that you are holding are focused on what you want. Um, so, you know, all the energy that's coming up is sort of suggesting that there are a lot of changes taking place. And so you're going to want to focus on what it is that you want to change to, to make sure that you get there. Because again, you're going to attract in those kind of situations and people and energies that are related to the kind of energy you're putting out there and what you're focusing on. If you're focusing on misery and fighting and um, lack, that's what you're going to keep getting. So you need to refocus your attention on what it is that you are trying to bring into your life. Another one from Archangel Michael, the romance angels are helping you, whoever the romance angels are, I guess there are some. Dear guardian angels of my soulmate, thank you for preparing my soulmate and me for love, for giving us the motivation to make healthful life changes and arranging for us to meet. Thank you for helping us to recognize each other and have the courage to say hello so that we can eventually delve into a truly intimate relationship. So um, for any of you that this applies to, um, this kind of goes back to the guidance issue. Like know that your guidance is um, real and you have it and it's there and follow it when, when you're receiving it. Um, listen closely inside your heart and you're going to know, um, you're going to hear your guidance. You're going to understand what you're what you're supposed to do, or how you're supposed to act, or where you're supposed to go. Um, additionally, I'm hearing something else about focused intention. You want to focus your intention. If your intention is to find this romantic partnership, um, focus it, but then let it go. Like write down what it is that you're looking for specifically in a partner, and then put it away somewhere. Like offer it up to the universe and then call it in and put it away somewhere if you that's the best way to kind of focus your intention but not like overdo it with crazy like obsessive thinking when you start with the obsessive thinking you're completely ruining your manifestation okay so don't do that um this tells you that you can relax that the angels are helping you with whatever this romantic situation is and um, then we have Guinevere, true love. The romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. So um, for whoever, anybody that this feels relevant to, um, if you feel it, it's probably real. So sweet. Um, next, assertiveness. This situation can be healed gently with love as you've requested. Then there's also a need for your strength and truthfulness with the other people involved. We will stand right behind you as you speak your truth, giving you strength and guiding your words. This is all about speaking your truth. We've been talking about speaking your truth for weeks now. Um, so at this time, it's important to be speaking your truth. Um, and making sure that you're assertive but but loving so you don't want to just run in and like slash and burn you want to make sure that you do it in a loving way that you can um feel uh i guess proud of later like you you want to speak your truth in a way that is going to able be able to be received by the listener 
Next, um, ask Archangel Michael to help you with this situation. The prayer is, Archangel Michael, thank you for assisting me with whatever situation. Please help me be filled with faith and peace at all times. This is just more about your guidance. Rely on your guidance. Offer your um, situations, your troubles up to a higher power and release them so that they can be resolved for the highest and best good. Ask for them to be resolved for the highest and best good. And then you can trust um, that they will be. Two more. <laughs> Sedna, infinite supply. You are supplied for today and all of your tomorrows. So if you, like a lot of other people, are in this place of fear, of anxiety, of um, feeling lack in resources, whether that be physical resources or lack in relationships or lack in um, uh, stability, um, health, whatever, that you truly have an infinite supply. It just remains for you to claim it and to make the choice to claim it. All of Everything is a choice. And so you need to make the choice to claim your abundance, your health, your romantic partner, your happiness, your joy. Um, once you realize that it is a choice um, and you consciously are working to remove the blockages that are causing these things to not come through, um, it will start to show up in your life infinitely. And there's no there is no end to the abundance available in the universe. And finally, for these cards, um, steady progress. We acknowledge you for the progress you've made in remembering love in your daily activities. We can clearly see the contribution you're making to the world through your thoughts, feelings, and actions of love. And this, to me, directly relates to all these cards about creating the situation and having the power to change it. This tells me that you are aware of that and you are working on changing it and you are consciously creating with the universe with your thoughts, feelings, emotions um, that come from a loving place because when you do that, what you're going to receive is going to come from a loving place um, and that you're making steady progress and that you should really be proud of yourself and take a look at where you were maybe six months ago and see where you are now and understand the kind of transformation that you've undergone. All right, finally, I drew a Rumi card. Um, these are very long, but they're very, um, they're very, what is the word I want? They're really good. There's another word I want to use. They're really profound. So um, the card I drew is number 26, Al Uza Star of Venus. I'm going to read from the book on this because it's so long. Um, Try not to, to uh, bail out of the video now because it's really worth hearing. Um, so this is a poem by Rumi first. I am the pure light, my son. I am not a handful of worthless dust. I am not just an empty shell. I am a regal pearl formed in this world. Close your eyes to see and become aware of me. Perceive me with eyes that see the unseen and come into the mystery to find me. I am a carefree visitor here for you, Rumi. Okay, so this now is the channeled message from Alana Fairchild, who wrote this whole um, series. My beautiful one, born of pure radiance, you have love in your heart and a passion for play that cannot be dulled by bleakness, boredom, or fear. Your soul is sensual and dances with the light, life of utter abandonment and devotion. Though the ways of this world seem strange to you at times, you eventually declare it to be nothing but strange beauty and expand your heart, resisting nothing, to allow all to be bathed in the radiance of your being. You are here to share the light of another world, a blessed world of consciousness, pure and divinity, so absolute that it transcends duality and instead brings all into the oneness of the great love. And then this is her uh, additional writing. The star of Venus is the great androgyny, neither solely masculine nor feminine, but the integration of both. So perfect for today's message, um, speaking of integrating. The power it bestows is mighty and based utterly in love. 
When the star seeks us out, multiple blessings are bestowed and our spiritual growth can be accelerated in ways that may be quite dazzling and surprising to our more limited mindset and belief systems. With great blessings, comma, <laughs> I can't believe I just said comma, that's hilarious. That's, I'm so used to using voice to text to put these things on Facebook. With great blessings, great growth is possible. However, the blessings don't do the growth for us, making it magically happen. They give us the oomph we need, the power and the opportunities and assistance we need. It is still we who take the journey. The great spiritual journey for our souls at this time in Earth's history is a journey from duality to oneness. Many are signing up for that wild, loving adventure. This oracle has come to you as a reminder that you too have been granted a ticket for that journey. This journey of oneness is not about denying duality, but about experiencing it as an expression of one love. It is about no longer being enslaved by it. It's about avoiding what is not wanted in order to pursue what is wanted. It's about embracing the all of finding the freedom and joy originally sought, but now through a path that takes you into joy and freedom existing within. To take the great love transformation from man or woman into cosmic, uh, cosmic androgyny does not require that we lose our sense of femininity or masculinity. Rather, they become so superior in development that they cease to be distinguished from each other. Our masculine clarity with its discernment, practicality, and application becomes so tender, loving, and compassionate and tempted, tempered with grace that the feminine is integrated with it. Our feminine nurturance, dedication, and connection to life becomes so fierce that discernment and wise action naturally prevail. With this great androgynous integration of the masculine and feminine into oneness, men and women of this beautiful earth become capable of new consciousness. It is of one based in love, of service to life, letting go of judgment, stereotypes, and limiting belief systems, and opening up to compassion for all life. As the consciousness is anchored, spiritual growth becomes rapid. This is not necessarily without some bumps and bruises. Letting go of old notions of what it is to be a man or a woman, to be masculine or feminine, letting go of fear of women or men, of emasculation or victimization, letting go of wounding are all great steps forward. They promise liberation, empowerment, and compassion, as well as peace and happiness, yet they are not easy steps to take. Great resistance can be revoked or can be evoked within you as an individual and also within the culture around you, which might find your notion of personal spiritual empowerment con confronting and challenging to their culture of fear-based enslavement of the soul. They will be right about it being confronting, but mistaken in assuming that the confrontation is, some, is something to be resistant or resisted. So then what to do? Al-Uzza, the ancient shining one, also known as the star of Venus, holds much power and strength. Even a small blessing of her light is more powerful than the fear of thousands, if not millions of people. She is shown as a worthy ally in a battle of any kind, even a spiritual battle. You must, however, stay aligned with her, her way, which is not to fight fear with fear, hate with hate, or anger with anger. Does this mean you should not feel fear, hate, or anger? Of course not. Venus denies no experience. So let yourself feel whatever you feel. The guidance is not to stop being human. Take the next step to divine human into allowing the star blessing to nestle in your heart so that you can shift as you feel the feelings, holding them with compassion, then choosing your own truths that resonate at a far more refined vibration. The rebellious passion of the star of Venus is that she seeks out whomever is ready to know more fully the truth of the divine oneness. Whether the culture around them can acknowledge one of their own becoming more enlightened is a blessing or not, it is a divine gift nevertheless. How liberating it shall feel to be truly empowered to live life as you feel is truthful and feel completely empowered to allow others to do the same with joy in your heart. You understand that everyone is walking an unfolding path and that we do not have to understand or justify the path of another to feel the peace in our own hearts. If you're stumbling with judgment within yourself, do not fear. The blessing of Venus is coming to you to help you surrender to it, to help you find your way through so that you can be free now. Your guidance is to trust your path, trust your evolution, 
even in the face of those around you reacting to it possibly in fear or discomfort. Trust in the paths of others too, for in truth, there is one path and we are all on it. You do not have to convince anyone of anything that is not your job. Your job is to embrace your wisdom, embrace your freedom and empowerment to grow spiritually and live your life accordingly. You are becoming, through bestowal of grace, something more of a goddess and a god, of a human and a sacred animal integrated as one. This is sacred alchemy amplified in the star fires of Venus, who loves you as a brother or sister and honors your soul with her blessing. Shine true, beloved, shine true. So I think that is an amazing message to end today, today's reading on, um, especially considering all the things that we've all been going through recently, all the balancing, all the clearings, um, and just remembering that we're seeking that or, or reaching for that place of oneness, that separation is just an illusion and that truly we are all one um, in the same. And so um, truly integrating both the masculine and the feminine, the spiritual and the temporal, integrating all of those things um, is really the message for this week to bring you to that next step. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and um, you can order a reading or um, healing session on my website, which is redhoundreiki.com. There's a page right there on the homepage that you can fill out and I contact you um, for scheduling. So I wanna thank you so much for sticking with me. We're just over 30 minutes on this reading. I really enjoy doing these and I really appreciate all of you guys who um, stick with me through this, okay? I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Have a good week, bye.